Agamelatine or Valdoxan is not approved in the United States. Well, why is that? Well, during the phase three trials, agomelatine started showing negative results and specifically showing that it was inducing liver toxicity. So those trials had been stopped and FDA approval was not given in the United States. However, it is approved in Europe and Australia and with specific conditions on checking liver function or liver enzymes before and during treatment of this medication. So in this video, we're gonna talk about agomelatine and everything that you need to know about it. So stay tuned. So number one, what is agomelatine? Well, agomelatine is an antidepressant and it works on the melatonergic or melatonin receptors and specifically the melatonergic one and two receptors. Now, if you recall my video on how blue light blocking glasses affect their circadian rhythm, then you will understand that light enters into your eyes, signals to the pineal gland to secrete melatonin. And this communication is specifically done through the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And within the suprachiasmatic nucleus, we have melatonin or melatonergic receptors. And that is where this medication is working specifically. It also antagonizes the serotonin transport systems, specifically 5-HT2C and 5-HT2B. Now, in that suprachiasmatic nucleus, we also have 5-HT2C receptors. And so not only is it helping with depression, but it's also helping to set their circadian rhythm. And also with that 5-HT2C antagonism, it'll help to boost mood by increasing norepinephrine and dopamine in the prefrontal cortex. This medication has also been shown to help to increase brain-derived neurotropic factor, which increases neuroplasticity. And so what is agamelatine used for? Well, like I said, it's not FDA approved, so it has no FDA approval. However, it was approved in Europe in 2009 and approved in Australia in 2010 for the treatment of major depressive disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. So how long does agamelatine take to work? Well, to treat depression, just like all the other antidepressants, it's gonna take two to four weeks. However, it has been shown to improve daytime function, increasing your pleasure, and also improving your sleep within one week. And so that is one of the advantages of this medication. And this is shown at therapeutic doses of 25 to 50 milligrams taken at bedtime. So is agamelatine addicting? Well, no, just like all the other antidepressants are not addicting, agomelatine is also not addicting. And actually, in a lot of the research on agomelatine, it shows that it doesn't even have any withdrawal symptoms. However, I would caution anybody who's on this medication for longer than three months to still decrease it very slowly because it is possible that neuroadaptation can occur and withdrawal symptoms can occur. It just hasn't come out in the research just yet. And so what are the side effects of agomelatine? Well, the common side effects seen in up to 10% of patients are going to be hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation, back pain, fatigue, those increased liver enzymes, headache, dizziness, or somnolence, insomnia, migraine, or anxiety. Now, some rare and dangerous side effects that can occur, as with other antidepressants, there is the risk of suicidal ideation. And again, this is typically observed in ages 24 and younger. Um, so if you're having suicidal ideation, make sure to notify your provider right away or go to your nearest emergency room. Another rare side effect that we talked about and we touched on earlier is liver failure. So because of those elevated liver enzymes, some of these patients during the phase three trials were showing liver toxicity. And so this is a risk. And so agomelatine is actually contraindicated in patients with uh, liver failure or any type of hepatic or liver impairment. And also while you're on this medication, so your labs must be taken before and during the treatment of agomelatine. So if your serum transaminases are increased by three times the normal value, then they'll actually stop the medication and switch you to something different because then you would be at a high risk for this liver failure or liver toxicity. 
And so now when we talk about drug interactions of agamelatine, keep in mind that this medication is actually metabolized by the cytochrome P450-1A2, and it's 90% metabolized by the 1A2, and then 10% by the 2C9 and 2C19 enzymes. So some strong inhibitors and inducers of these substrates um, need to be taken with caution while taking agamelatine are, and are typically not advised because they can produce side effects and put you at greater risk for uh, that liver toxicity of this medication. Now specifically, you wanna avoid the use of strong inhibitors such as ciprofloxacin and fluvoxamine. You also wanna avoid the MAOIs because they put you at risk for hypertensive crisis and also serotonin syndrome. And also avoid the use of alcohol. And as I've mentioned in many other videos, alcohol is a depressant, so it's doing the opposite of the antidepressant. But more specifically with agamelatine, alcohol can also increase your liver enzymes, so put you at a greater risk for that liver toxicity. And also agamelatine contains lactose monohydrate, so if you have any sensitivities to lactose or glucose galactose absorption, then you're probably not gonna be able to take this medication as you will not be able to tolerate it. So what are my final thoughts on agamelatine or valdoxan? Well, I don't personally use this medication because I'm a provider in the United States and like I mentioned, it's not approved in the United States. However, looking over a lot of the research on agomelatine, it seems to be a very effective antidepressant and specifically for patients who have depression and problems with sleep and the circadian rhythm. Now, what I also found very interesting is that there were two studies that were conducted, reviews, that looked at agomelatine compared to other antidepressants. There was one that was published in Cochrane in 2013 and another one published in Lancet Journal in 2018. Now what they showed is that agomelatine is actually very well tolerated and is just as effective as other antidepressants. Now the 2018 study actually showed that it was more tolerable than most of the antidepressants producing less side effects less sexual dysfunction, and had less dropout rates than a lot of the other antidepressants. And it was actually found to be one of only two, so agamelatine and fluoxetine in this study found it to be actually more tolerable than placebo. So that tells me that it is a very well tolerated medication and actually has some efficacy to show that it works as it was compared to 21 antidepressants. And so if you're thinking about taking agamelatine, you wanna look at the risks versus the benefits. And so the risk mainly with this medication is going to be liver toxicity. So if you have any issues with your liver, I wouldn't recommend it. But however, if you do the blood work that's indicated for this medication, perhaps if you do start to have elevated liver enzymes, they can catch it early on and prevent liver toxicity from happening. So it's definitely something that if you're interested in, you wanna talk with your provider about. So there you have it. That is my review on algomelatine or valdoxan. Are you taking agomelatine or thinking about taking it? Let us know down in the comment section below because we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I'll look forward to seeing you all next week.